Race War in High School. The Ten-Year Destruction of Franklin K. Lane High School in Brooklyn. Harold Saltzman. Appendix E. Black Panther Plans for Controlling Black High School Students. Source, Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations of the Senate Committee on Government Operations. Riots, Civil and Criminal Disorders, Part 19. June 18, 1969, pages 3826, 3849 to 3853. Activists in Black Student Unions, BSUs, which are now proliferating across the country in high schools and in colleges, are coming more and more under Black Panther Party domination, the prime example of this being the San Francisco State College riots, in which George Murray, Minister of Education of the Black Panther Party, took a key role. Local disturbances and demands of black students can be directly attributed to the Black Panther Party mainly due to an organizational outline for black student unions that was prepared and distributed by the Black Panther Party in December 1968. There follows an outline of that on this and the succeeding pages. Exhibit number 383. Organization of the Black High School Student, Some Basic Guidelines. The high school is one of the most important components in these early stages of the black liberation struggle. It is one of the few places where you have a true cross-section of at least one segment of the black community, the youth. The purposes of organizing the black high school student is to, 1, create an atmosphere at the school where students can learn to think, 2, establish a base area from which to operate in other sections of the black community, and, 3, recruit cadres for other areas of activity in the black liberation struggle. This paper is designed to give some basic guidelines for high school organization, and should be treated only as a guide and not a rule book. The most important factor is the initiative of those organizing to assess the situation of the particular high school he is organizing at and come up with particular methods in that situation. 1. Hardcore Steering Committee this committee must be made up of trained, disciplined bloods who attend the high school. They should meet as many times a week as possible with a member of the BPPNC, who will provide the link between them and the party. Also, these hardcore bloods should attend party meetings and should be active members of the party, if possible. For security reasons the groups should be small, possibly five or six. They should be as uptight or more uptight than the average party member, because it will be their role to recruit the masses of students at the high school. This is the most important component of the high school organization, and several months of intensive study and training should be taken with them before they will be able to carry on the functions of the party at their school. Their first loyalty must be to the BPPNC, from which they will receive direct orders. 2. Off-Campus Group these hardcore brothers will comprise the Central Committee of a Black Nationalist Organization, OCG, of members of the particular high school, who will hold their meeting off campus initially, will be made up of those who will be doing the day-to-day -day work of the organization, passing out leaflets, selling newspapers, talking to fellow black students, etc. Efforts should be made to put to use any skills which come out of the group, such as photography, artistic ability, writing ability, etc. The members of this group, of necessity, cannot be worked with as much as the hardcore group, but they must be given at least one session a week in lecture and discussion of such things as black history, political philosophy, organizing techniques, karate, and any other subjects which the party leaders see as being necessary. The most important thing to realize is that this will be an organization chiefly of workers. The policy of the group will be set and determined by the BPPNC through the Hardcore Steering Committee, all the time inviting discussions, criticisms, and suggestions, from members of the OCG. The only way there will be any discipline in the organization is if the members realize that the Steering Committee is the leader but the only way the group will be of any success is if the Steering Committee realizes that it must listen to the demands of its group and of the masses of black students on the campus. Only with this interaction can here, there, be any progress made in organizing the black students in the high school. 3. Umbrella Organization The first job of the OCG should be to create some sort of organization on campus and instantly make all black students at the high school a part of this organization. 
This would be a meeting ground where all black students could come, despite class or other differences, and talk out their problems without having to thump on them. It must be understood that this is a black organization, no whites allowed, and that the reasons for this are not racist, but simply that black people must learn to come together themselves to discuss their collective problems. An interaction from all sides of the picture should be encouraged, and no black student should be forced out as long as he is sincere in trying to get the problem solved. This is the place where the OCG would find out just what the interested black students at the school are thinking about, and from these meetings plans of action can be drawn up. Also, this umbrella organization can be a powerful force during negotiations with the school, which will usually come at one point. The purpose of the umbrella organization will be to bring about a united front of the bourgeois and ghetto black factions at the school, and so for purposes of reaching the most students its meetings should be held on campus. Bloods for the OCG could be recruited from those who attend its meetings. Through this organization, strikes, boycotts, and rallies could be started. 4. School Bulletin A black school bulletin should immediately be started by the OCG. This should be distributed free to the black students at the high school as often as possible and with as many pages as possible, without, of course, sacrificing quality. This bulletin would announce black activities on and off campus, give the positions of the OCG, and aid in politicizing black students at the school and raising their consciousness. 5. Reaching the masses of black students. Along with the school bulletin, other efforts should be made to mobilize and politicize the masses of black students at the school. The most important thing which can be done by the OCG is the day-to-day -day blowing to the bloods on campus. There can be no substitute for this. At lunchtime, before and after school and when possible during classroom time, discussions on topics ranging from world to school to personal problems should be encouraged by the OCG organizers. Those who appear the most interested should be encouraged to come either to the Umbrella Organization meetings or the OCG meetings or both. Black Power Newspapers should be sold, and other literature passed out. Discussions should be started in classrooms as much as possible, and OCG members should press their teachers to let them lead discussion on black nationalism, black history, world problems, or other topics as they come up. When specific problems arise, such as if the OCG and the Umbrella Organization decide to key on the bad food at the cafeteria, this should be the topic that the organizers direct their attention to. Everything should be done to make the average black student feel a part of a black student confederation at the school and everything should be done to politicize him. 6. Political Candidates The OCG should definitely run an all-black slate of candidates for school elections, either for all offices or for the offices that the OCG considers the most important at that particular time. Coalitions and deals should be definitely be, sick, made with all bloods who have political power at the school already, but the OCG should shy away from making deals with white students unless it is absolutely necessary. Black Students These candidates would be directly responsible to the organization. The candidates would run on a well-thought-out ticket answering to the needs of the masses of black students, and once in office they would continue to work for the interests of the black students through direction from the OCG. 7. Black Athletes Union because the black athletes are either in actuality or in potentiality the most powerful student forces at the school, attempts should be made either to neutralize them or to bring them over to the side of OCG. It should be realized that during a riot or other disturbances among black students these are the mercenary forces which whitey uses to patrol the halls or otherwise quell the violence. If there is already an athlete's union, such as Block C, etc., the black members should be approached and urged to take it over. The most radical members of the union should be recruited for the OCG, so that their understanding of the struggle will increase. Coalitions should be definitely be, sick, made with the most popular athletes and they should be urged to exert their influence to get bloods to join the OCG. Whether there is an athletes union already or not, black athletes at the school should be urged to start their own separate union. Special efforts should be made to politicize all black athletes, so that if any trouble starts they will realize whose side they are really on. 
The threat of all the black athletes walking off the field during a school boycott can be a very powerful weapon when negotiating with school officials, but a lot of groundwork must be laid because this is usually the most reactionary element of the high school. 8. Social events. The OCG should sponsor dances and other social events and should try to bring blood entertainers to the school under their name. This is an invaluable tool for getting bloods to support your cause. Also, the OCG should not overlook sponsoring special days where bloods are urged to do special things, such as bring watermelons to eat for lunch or something of that sort. By themselves these things will do nothing to further the black liberation struggle, but in conjunction with the other activities suggested in this paper they can serve to keep the school administration off balance as well as increase support among the black students at the school for the OCG. The OCG should also support any all-blood events at the school, except completely reactionary ones, and should form coalitions with black social clubs at the schools. Remember, the more sides you hit the black student from, the harder it will be for him to escape reality. 9. Lectures and Discussions The OCG should hold regular, on-campus lectures and discussions, if possible. Outside speakers should be invited. And the topics should be such things as black history, political philosophy, and topics along those lines. World problems would be another area to be discussed. This would be just another way of politicizing the black students. 10. Turning the school black. Every symbol at the school should be turned into a black symbol if possible. So as to further get the black students looking to the OCG to solve his, sick, problems and to further increase his, sick, identification with the other black students at the school. The OCG should organize, or get the bloods themselves to organize black functions in the areas in which they are interested. Black talent productions, bongo drummer corps, theatrical groups, etc., all should be organized and pushed up tempo. They can then be later used by the OCG to further hit bloods from all sides. The OCG should realize that it should put its hands in everything, as long as it will not overextend the organization and as long as by so doing it will increase the consciousness of black students at the school. Coalitions should be made with every black function already at the school, probably through the umbrella organization, and either these forces should be neutralized or brought over to the side of the OCG. 11. Action. Initially, action should be taken in places where it has been determined by the OCG that black students at the school are interested and have shown that they are willing to be committed. This commitment, of course, will have to be pushed up tempo by the OCG organizers, as stated before. The OCG must constantly come up with new areas to protest and mobilize with, so that they aren't continually calling for the same old thing such as a school boycott. Boycotts can be effective, but only if the groundwork for them is laid and only if they are used sparingly. Mass rallies are another area that can be used to good effect. One tactic could be to have 200 or 300 bloods break up to the school board meeting to protest a certain action. It should be remembered that no plan of action should be taken if it can be used to alienate the OCG from the masses of students. For this reason, in the initial stages of organizing anything of a mass nature should be kept to a minimum, until a sufficient amount of sympathetic forces are built around the OCG. Such action as burning the school down or jumping on white students should only be taken at later stages of the struggle, and only if the OCG is not directly involved in the rebellions, publicly. The thing the OCG must always remember is that its function is to mobilize the black students to take over their school, only to destroy that school if the administration forces give it no alternative. Black Power a change gonna come.